Well, damn. Now I wish I'd recorded that opening tee shot. It was right down the middle. Stack and tilt review on course. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. This is the on-course review of the Stack and Tilt golf system to round out this series. I'm going to play nine holes today. It's all I've got time for. It's been, it's been kind of tough to get out here on course and find the time uh, between the weather and just busy life and then, of course, busy golf courses <laughs> to be able to get out here and film this. But we're here. We're going to get it done. Shot number two coming up. All right, so we are no warm-up, um, which <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, uh, but honestly, it's kind of what I'm used to doing. That's not good. That's really weak. Keys for a day. Don't do too much. Don't try and overpower it. That was a really weak swing. That was awful. Um, and, and just focus on what feels like a half swing and use the lower body. Use the lower body. That's not a good swing. On to shot three. All right, that's good. That's the right club. Oh, hit the green. And looks like it might have just trickled off the left side. That's perfect. Great contact. This is the first time I've been on course in a few months. And I know what you're saying. Oh my God, Chad's actually out on what is that it looks like a it looks like a golf course in the background i can't believe chad's actually yeah chad's actually out on the golf course i know oh man that is coming up woefully short my god spraying grass bad decision to not chip that maybe nope ah that is an opening bogey not not great. All right, hole two, par four. Just gonna hit a hybrid out there. It's a tight hole. There's, this golf course has um, some shorter holes on it and you think it's very gettable. However, you've got these tight sort of shoot-like fairways in a lot of cases. And then this one actually cuts back to the right. It's not a a stout dog leg but it is kind of a dog leg i'm just going to go right up the guts here with the uh, three hybrid just like that good high flight right down the pooper yep gonna leave me a good second shot so far not bad front flag 143 and a half and that's terrible contact ah uh, that's terrible. It's coming up about flag high, but that is super thin. So what did I do? Uh, I, I think I just tried to, to slide into it rather than turn into it. Ah, oh, it's disappointing. I could really use a par save here after that opening bogey. I'm on a tight lie. Well, I mean, it's not crazy tight, but it's, it's, you're gonna have to pinch it. And uh, I don't have a ton of green to work with. I got my 60. And all I wanna do here is just bump this ball a little bit. And just think about the flight that I want. And then it's just a matter of feeling it out. It's just, it's just a feel shot. So let's see, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. All right, shortest par four goes uphill almost the whole way. I'm gonna show you this view. Uh, just because I don't get this view that often. A lot of you have trouble with the driver. I've had issues with the driver with this system. Um, don't try to do too much. Still wanna feel the half swing, want good contact. What do we want out of this? Just good flush contact. That's it. Uh, sure, I'd like to have some speed. Sure, I'd love this to go 418 yards. That would be awesome. It's not going to, 
but uh, really it's about the flush contact here for me that's it keep the hands low turn into it that's a rocket ship where is my T what happened does stack and tilt make you lose all your golf tees God 82 yards to a center flag gonna hit the 54 here I've got kind of a tightish lie again <laughs> oh man that is right line oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> the difference between simulator golf and disc golf I, that simulate simulate that <laughs> you've got to have a golf swing that is able to control the low point especially on a shot like that that's one of the things that stack and tilt promises is the control of the low point you saw it right there that's excellent we got to put it birdie this green's a little maybe a little softer than most oh that's a good roll it didn't go right at all so i'm thinking that this was kind of i don't know if it's if you see it from your side but from my side this cup looks a little tilted uh gave it a good roll good speed recording your game yeah yeah i got a youtube channel so i try and get out here where uh you know people don't don't pile up so much because i don't want to bother them but yeah but I film it, do reviews of golf swings, stuff like that. I'm doing stack and tilt right now. Yeah. So I light my game on fire about every two months, and then that, that entertains people watching me come out here and, and screw everything up. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> well, it had a little movement, didn't it? A little movement went a little left good speed though good pace i'll take that i'm always curious what kind of songs people have in their heads or do they have songs in their head i'm going to cut this corner off this part four goes this way and then dog legs over and it's just as tight down this fairway as it is down this place right here which is not let me just be clear it is not fairway <laughs> taking your chances because you do got this lone pine tree kind of sticking up here. Um, and then you've got a shed out in the distance. And then there are some trees pushed back behind that shed where um, if you get too close to those trees and behind them, you can really cut yourself off and not have a shot into the green. But the green is dead that way. And I've played out this way plenty of times and you're left with a 200 and something yard shot coming into the green. It's just, it's just not a, it's just not an ideal situation but i'm always curious about the songs that people have in their heads uh this morning for me it's the pretenders uh back on the chain gang that is that's what i've got playing right now come on solid contact don't do too much beautiful ah uh, bomb Oh, that's perfect shape. Back on the chain gang. Da -da -da. Now I've shot this flag. It is 125. It is a front pin. You do have a little bit of green. It is going uphill just a little bit. So, you know, to the flag is 125. Center of the green is probably 130. Uh, with it going uphill, it's probably to the center of the green going to play more like 133, something like that. Uh, I've got a decent lie, even, <laughs> even though this is it's a lot of crap um i'm gonna hit a nine iron here and i'm gonna try and have that half swing feel this is basically me taking an extra club and you can kind of see what i'm talking about over here with these trees if i had gotten more left you know um i would have been stuck behind that and then it's just a punch out so you you really are kind of just taking your fate in your own hands Uh, I think that bounced a little bit. I think it hit the fringe. It's hard to tell from here, but I think it hit the fringe and kind of came back a little bit. 
didn't catch it perfectly flush. Um, I think one thing that I'll tell you guys uh, as far as like a tip or at least something that helps me, and that's all I can do is tell you what helps me. When you take it back, you try and stay over that lead foot and you take the club inside. When you get over that lead foot from here, where do you go? You don't want to spin out and leave and let your weight go back. You actually want to get your weight to stay over that lead leg and then your hips are actually going to come out and try and get past or right over the top of that front leg. When you come through from here, it's a matter of shoving your hips forward without your head following. That gives you that arched finish in your back. So here, keep the head steady, shove the hips forward. It brings the club in more shallow. That's it's probably the culprit for some of these, some of these shots that's not getting great contact. It kind of hit the collar and came back. This is like sloped into me. Oh my God, seriously? I thought I had you recording on that chip shot and I come over here and realize that it did not record. I had probably, let's see, seven feet to get onto the green and then probably 10 feet to the hole. So it's uphill. I took a 60, I opened it up a little bit and all I think about is just popping the ball and letting it run. And I left it about 13 inches away from the hole and put it in to save my par. Now we're onto a long par three. Can Stack and Tilt help me navigate a long par three? Let's find out. This green is tough because it has a false front. So anything short, it's not gonna make the green. It's got a bunker to the right. It's got a bunker to the left. There's a big cliff that falls off to the left. And if you get back over on this side, you've got a really tricky chip to come down and long. Good luck with, with long. It is better to be a little short here and dead in line with it if you're gonna miss, but this is a pretty sizable green for it to be a long par three. Let's, let's see what we got. It's a good size green, so I can't complain about that. 180 yards, middle flag, 180 yards, middle flag. Normally in the simulator, that is a five iron for me. However, with no roll and all carry pretty much, I don't think my five iron carries 180. I think this is gonna have to be the hybrid, but the full hybrid is gonna be just too much. So I'm gonna have to take a little off of the three hybrid. How do I take a little bit off of a three hybrid is a really good question. Some people say, well, you just make a shorter swing. And that is definitely something that works for a lot of people. Uh, it's actually worked for me before as well. Um, but I think with this one, I think it's gonna be my, what's the word? My intention or my, I guess intention is the, is the right word. I'm just gonna swing with a little less gusto. I don't wanna roast this golf ball. Something like that. Little baby draw. Oh yeah. Pretty sure that's dancing. Listen, um, I'm, I'm striking the ball pretty well. The keys to that is what I said in the very beginning. Uh, not every shot has been great. The keys are don't try and do too much. Just don't try to overpower things. That's one of my big, big issues is that I do try and overpower things. You can't do that with any system. When you try and do too much and you try and reach too far, oftentimes you get smacked in the mouth. And I've got, I've got a birdie putt, pin high. That club was a little bit too much club and I just, I didn't try and shorten my swing a whole lot. I, I, I'm still swinging with what feels like a half swing with this system. I've gone back to that. You may have seen that in the last video. That's what's working. But with that, I just tried to calm down a little bit. I just, I just thought flush contact and just swing with just a little bit less murderous intent. Moved a little bit left on me. Well, that's five pars in a row, folks. That's pretty good. 440 yard par four. Now I got a couple of comments for this one. Uh, number one, at least it's straight. Hey, how about that? Number two, these are the holes that 
people are shooting with their lasers nowadays waiting on the green to clear because they think they're going to drive the green it's 440 yards par four uh -huh. and then the next thing i would say is even though i'm playing from the white tees which should be fair for me given my my distances there's some calculation you use where you take your five iron distance and you multiply it by god what is it 36 or something like that i think i can't remember and then that tells you what yardages you should be playing from but even when you're playing from the correct tees you still get par threes like that last one we just had that's 189 185 yards whatever it is which is tough for most average golfers to hit that green in one and then you come up with a 440 yard par four i mean if it's a 440 yard par four and they changed it to a par five with my distances it would still be a pretty great thing for me to hit this green in two okay so <laughs> we're we're all at kind of a big disadvantage here all right this is going straight down the pipe hopefully uh, again don't try and do too much just because it's a long hole that that doesn't mean that uh that i want to try and overpower this hole i want good flush solid contact and uh just don't try and do too much just put it down the middle Just like that. Oh, and I leaked it right. Wow. It's not too poorly struck, but I leaked it off to the right. Well, it's not as close as I'd like, but I got a shot at par. and just came up a little bit short. Good line. And I overswung a little bit and left it out right. That could be trouble. Well, okay, this is the second time this has happened. I'm having camera issues. All right, so I had this whole thing about Young Guns 2 and how it's one of my favorite movies. And when they're down in the pit and they got the Lincoln County boys in the pit and then Bill is above them with the shovel and he says, I got two lots of news for you, good and bad. Which one you want first? And then they said, well, what's the bad news? And he goes, all we got for supper is horse shit. And somebody says, what's the good news? And Doc chimes in and says, there's tons of it. And I, this reminded me of that because the good news is, is that I, my ball was sitting right there on the, you know, underneath this tree and I had a clear shot. But the bad news was, is that I'm sitting on this rock hard stuff. I pull out my three hybrid, I'm 200 yards out. And I said that the wider sole plate will help me if my strike is a little bit off and it's about the right distance for the club. I hit a really good shot. It just faded. I think it's about the perfect distance. It faded off to the right hand side where there's a bunker i don't think it's in that bunker but it faded off of target it started right down the target line faded off so i've got a pit shot coming up to this green i can't believe this is what's happening with my camera all right again i'm not too worried about shots like this uh over bunkers a lot of people fear these they they get for some reason they get really scared on shots like this because they feel like they're going to thin it over the green and hit a just a, a rocket that goes all the way over to the other side and there is another bunker over there. Or they feel like they're gonna chunk it and leave it short or they're just gonna whiff underneath it and leave it short. Uh, again, I, I gotta say, through all these systems, the short game is my, it's my rock. It's what saves me. And, and I, there's more technique to it, okay? Don't get me wrong. There's your stance, your setup, your grip, your weight. You know what mechanisms are going I, I i've maybe i've just gotten past all that to where those things are just sort of they're innate they're in my system they're like reflexes but here really when i stand over the ball and i've got the club behind and it's time to go i can see that ball take off in my mind i can see the height that it's coming up off the ground if it's coming out this way or if it's coming out this way i can see it taking off and then I'm just, I'm, a, I'm not putting any force into the club. I'm just allowing the club to collide with the back of the ball and clip it to create that shot. There's, there's I don't throw a lot of technique in this. Um, I can just see it in my mind. This one's gonna have a little bit of height, but not an insane amount. It's gonna land probably about 10 feet short and it's gonna roll the rest of the way out. Um, 
I can just I can see it right now in my head and I'm just gonna let that happen just like that and that's rolling out just a little bit and it's just a few feet past the flag all right we're coming into my ninth hole which is the 18th hole on this course and if you've watched any of my videos in the past you know that I hate the 18th hole at this golf course it is a 560 yard par 5 dog leg you have water in front of the green a substantial pond that's in front of the green if I can get on this green in three it's going to take an accurate tee shot it's going to take a good solid second shot and it's going to take a really accurate third shot because the green on this uh, this particular hole is not very large it is also pretty sloped so if i can make it on this green in three hit a fairway in rig and a green in rig um, and give myself a good shot at birdie uh, it, it's basically like an eagle putt for me that's perfect all right that's the last drive of the day it's right down the middle i don't know for length but that one's it's a good length okay driver's been really good out here on course you know a lot of you guys have had some concerns about the stack and tilt system especially when it comes to driver uh, look it, it's just try not to stay in this robotic mindset that everything has to be just so it's okay to make this your own it's okay to make this swing your own and and customize it a little bit you got to get that good solid contact center of the face in order to have any shot whatsoever of hitting fairways and to get the kind of distances that you expect you probably can't see it on camera but the pond's down there i'm sitting right here in position a um, really good shot i'm going to hit the three hybrid even though it may be a little bit too much club for this layup but i'm going to try that same thing that i tried on that par three back there where i just take the impetus down just a little bit uh, take the effort levels down a little and just focus on good solid contact and it doesn't have to be you know brutally long just good solid contact into the back of the ball just like that all right so here's a philosophical question for you do you try and take the pressure off of yourself and take the stress levels down so that you don't have to deal with that stress. In situations like this, I've put a heap of expectations on myself by saying, hey, if I can hit this green in three and then birdie putt and yada, 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 this hole's really hard. Do you, do you try not to think about that and keep it out of your mind so that you don't have to face it? Or do you intentionally give yourself that pressure so that you're constantly under that pressure so that the pressure becomes normal and then you're better equipped to deal with it. I've got 123 yards. The pin is in the middle. The green is sloped back to front pretty severely. Um, it's going to have to carry pretty much the whole way. There's not going to be any roll. Now, I've put the pressure on myself to perform in this light. And if I don't, I'm going to look like an idiot. But I'm going to try and take the pressure off with club selection. We're going nine iron. Going to try and just get a good solid strike, take an extra club, see what we get. Tugged it a little bit left, good contact, oh, and we had the right club. I think I'm on the left fringe. Was I aiming that way? Did I pull it that way? I'm not sure, but that was a very solid good strike, and I gave it a really good run. I gave it a great effort. Uh, I've got a chance. I've got a chance. Roll out. Ah, lift it a little short. Let's go, baby. Well, that wraps it up. Two over par, 38 on a par 36. If you extrapolated that and I was able to perform on the next nine like I did on this nine, um, what was that, six of seven? Wow, six of seven fairways. If I did that same thing on the back nine, That'd be a 76, four over par. I'll take that. Now, I only hit three out of nine greens, uh, but some of them I didn't miss by very much. I did have some bad strikes. Five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 putts. Did have some not so great strikes. It happens, but my drives were really good. 
Most of my iron shots were really good. Hybrids out of the fairway, pretty good. I usually don't hit those very well. Did I control the low point? For the most part. What do I think of it as a whole? It's been pretty good to me. Hopefully you'll give it a shot. I really like the system. I think it is pretty simple. And I think it does as it says. See you guys in the next video.